you never really know what you're going to find when you search for kind of response. Sometimes you hike for hours, only to find that the swamp is completely dried out. Other times, the best sites are just on the side of the road. The Grand Pines National Park is one of the most biodiverse spots in southeastern Australia, with around 19 species of carnivorous plants that grow there. It's just a matter of getting out there and finding them. Today I'm heading out to the western edge of the Grampians. Uh, the area is fairly remote and pretty much covered in heath and woodland habitats. And there's numerous sandy creeks and swamps that flow through the area. I'm trying to find a particularly elusive bladderwort called uh, Tricularia Uh The species grows in grassy ephemeral swamps and really only appears when there's been enough rainfall during the winter time. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty wet day today, so hopefully I find what I'm looking for. As soon as I left the car, I found the red form of Drosera guniana growing in the woodland clearings around me. I've only ever seen this colour form in the Grampians area, which is distinct from the usual golden green plants common elsewhere. The species is closely related to other plants in the Drosera peltata complex, but it's distinguished by its large hairy flower buds which are close together on the stem. The rainfall was particularly high this year, so the ephemeral swamps had filled up over the winter. As the weather warms up, these waters start to evaporate, and it's in the receding edges that thousands of Tricularia barkeri were stimulated to flower. The easiest way to identify them is by the speckles on the upper part of the flower and prominent shoulder-like ridges near the centre. Drosera hookeri grew profusely on the edges of the swamps. The species is recognisable by its bright green branched foliage and small white flowers. Compared to its close relative, Rosaraganiana, the species prefers more open and often wetter habitats. Throughout the day, the rain came and went as I ventured further into the bush. Eventually, I came to an extensive system of flood grassland which had just begun to dry out. I was amazed to find the stunning Tricularia bubaholi growing in the muddy edges of the wetland. Its large flaring petals of many yellow ridges are surely one of the most beautiful in Australia, and I was lucky to catch them at the right time. Too early and they would have been submerged, and too late and they would have already dried out. The following day, I followed a trail that took me around the creeks and heathlands in the area. This habitat is characterised by sparse vegetation and sandy soils that have been stripped of the nutrients by the surrounding creeks. Not long into the hike, I found a lot of Drosera pygmaea growing on the side of the trail. The species is tiny as its name suggests, only growing to around a centimetre in diameter and it's the only pygmy sand dew to roam the eastern states of Australia. Equally tiny was Eutricularia tenella, a small species of bladderwort with pink lobe flowers. The plant grows as an annual in the winter wet mossy seepages that completely dry up by summertime. Beautiful stems of Drosera gracilis grew in waterlogged soils around the margins of the creek. The plants are identified by their reddish colour and well-spaced hairy flower buds that produce seed with a hooked appendage. After the walk, I visited a large swamp that was so lush and overflowed with life. The plants were flourishing here, 
including the floating bladderwort Tricularia australis. The species is a true aquatic plant, growing whirls of leaves and traps along a stem that floats just under the surface of the water. I noticed patches of purple a bit deeper in the water and knew at once that they were bladderworts. At first I thought they might have been Tricularia opposite flora, given the bell-shaped lower petal and straps on the upper petal. But these straps were splotchy and the ridges at the centre were more prominent than usual. These features lead me to believe that the plants are a natural hybrid between the opposite flora and new Barkerai. I'm not sure that anybody else has documented this hybrid before, and it's discoveries like this that keep me searching for plants in the wild. The peaks of the Grampians are some of the more scenic spots in Australia, with dramatic sandstone ridges that reach high into the clouds. This habitat receives the perfect mix of light, water and soil to support a lot of unique carnivorous plants. So when the weather cleared up sufficiently, I hiked up the mountains to see what grew up there. After a few hours of hiking, I came to a lookout at the top of a cliff, where I found Drosera auriculata. Unlike lowland forms, the plants up here were red in colour, presumably in response to the cold and exposed conditions up in the peaks. Usually the species grows a single tall stem, but that seemed to have frozen off at some point and was replaced by multiple shorter stems arising from the base. At the top of the highest mountain in the Grampians, I found Drosera aberrans still looking nice and dewy. In the lowlands, this winter-growing plant had long died back to its resting tuber, but up here in the peaks, the cold and wet climate seems to have delayed its growing season by a few months. But the main reason I went up here was to find the Tricularia grampiana. Bladderwort that is endemic to the highest peaks in the Grampians and surrounding ranges. The seepages on the cliffside were coloured purple by thousands of plants, all coming to bloom at the same time. The species lives a precarious life in layers of moss just one or two centimetres deep. As summer comes, its habitat dries up completely and the bladderworts die, only persisting in the environment as seed. Yet, these plants continue to put up these magnificent displays, year after year, perfecting an intricate relationship with such a hostile environment. You never really know what you're going to find when you search for carnivorous plants, but it's always going to lead you to the most beautiful places. Mm -hmm.